Good morning to you, Alvaro. Now, what are you hearing in Madrid about this Odegaard deal? Do you expect him to end up at Arsenal? Well, it's a possibility. As far as I know, there are many clubs in Spain and all around Europe. Uh, we are talking about, for example, Ajax is interested. Many clubs in Germany. In Spain, of course, Real Sociedad and Sevilla. And after Sky Sports uh, News, we've realized here in Spain that also Arsenal is a possibility. As far as I know, there's uh, one club which is above everyone, which is Real Sociedad, where the kid played last year. And it's a huge possibility. But now Real Madrid has a new offer. It's Arsenal 1. And after Mesut Ozil left, it's a huge possibility for him to go there, obviously. So he's, he's clearly very highly rated if all of these clubs want him. But why can't he get a game for Real Madrid? Well, there are two uh, important things to say to remember. In a did to start with this famous 4-2-3-1 in the first games. For example, he played in the first Real Madrid La Liga in Anoeta against Real Sociedad, his former colleague. But after Zidane changed to his famous 4-3-3, so there was impossible for him to play. But if you ask me why he hasn't played in the last uh, two months more than five minutes, if I have to be honest, my answer is I have no idea. Because, of course, Kroos, Modric and Casemiro has been very important in the last few weeks. But Isco or Asensio has not uh, performed as, as good as Zidane expected. So uh, Odegaard is young, OK, he's 22 years old. But he played extremely well last year in Real Sociedad. And it seems that this was his year, especially after Zidane, remember this, uh, asked Real Madrid president Florentino Perez to pick up the player because the player was in a two years loan. And this summer, instead of staying in Guipuzco in Real Sociedad, he came back to Madrid. Maybe you can confirm whether this is, is true, Alvaro. Was he training by himself after the Athletic Bilbao game? Yeah, it, it all started one week ago when Real Madrid lost against Athletic Club de Bilbao in the semifinals in the Spanish Super Cup in La Rosaleda in the Malaga Stadium. Uh, the question, well, it's something that happens normally that a player who hasn't started in the lineup or even doesn't have minutes uh, start to rehearse or to practice or to train after a game. Well, this is typical, but it was very graphical for the Spanish press, all the fans. Uh, asking themselves, why has Martin Odegaard come last July, August to Real Madrid if after five months he's only going to train after a game where Real Madrid lost and he's not playing? Uh, it's a graphical situation, this one, and many people do not understand why he started to train after Real Madrid lost against Athletic Club de Bilbao. Well, a lot of Arsenal fans do want to know a little bit more about him just in case he does end up at the Emirates. Uh, what should the fans expect from him? How exciting is he? Uh, it's an extremely good player. He's a 22 years old player. If someone asks me from Arsenal uh, what kind of player is him, I would say it's very similar to Mesut Ozil because he's lefty. He plays extremely well between lines, between the strikers and the midfielders. Uh, maybe he has even more goal, for example, than Mesut Ozil, but maybe he travels a little less. But it's an amazing player. And I think it will be an amazing player for, for Arsenal and for Mikel Arteta for sure. OK, well, in that case, long term, it looks like Real Madrid, short term, sorry, it looks like Real Madrid are happy to, to let him go. But long term, is his future still at Real Madrid? I guess it will be because uh, Florentino Perez, the president himself, uh, some months ago said that it will be the future of Real Madrid. But it's a tricky situation right now with Zidane because the player is extremely angry. He doesn't understand Zidane's behaviour in the last weeks. And as I said before, after the first December game, against Shakhtar, uh, the, the kid has played only five minutes. For example, last year, in this right moment with Real Sociedad, he played all the games in La Liga, 19 games, 90 minutes every game. And now in Madrid, in La Liga, he has only played seven games and in the last two months, only five minutes. So I will say his future is in Real Madrid, but I'm not sure to assure that his future will be if Zidane keeps on being the manager. OK, well, on that, it was an embarrassing defeat for Real last night. Third division side, uh, Alcoyano in the Copa del Rey. What's the reaction been to that out there? Right now in the club, they feel that it's an embarrassing moment, of course. Uh, they're not going to sack out, kick out uh, Zinedine Zidane. He's not going to be fired because they think that he has uh, to be trust. Real Madrid plays next Saturday against Alaves in Mendizorroza in La Liga, new game. 
Well, it's an embarrassing situation, but now they're going to keep on with the with the, the coach. But the feeling right now is that Real Madrid has not, as many people said in the very first part of the season, has not the players enough not only to win La Liga or the UEFA Champions League, but to win these kinds of games. Because three or four years ago, Real Madrid has two teams, teams A, team A and Team B. Now it's difficult to see if the Team B could perform as good as the Team A. For example, Modric, Kroos, Sergio Ramos and these kinds of players has not a replacement right now in Real Madrid. And Real Madrid is a club that is getting older in their players. Yeah, it'll be interesting to watch what happens there over the next few transfer winners, actually. Alvaro, thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah, you too. And to JD and Ade, good morning. Ade, just um, recap that exclusive that, that Paul Gilmore, our reporter, brought us about Martin Odegaard going to Arsenal. Yeah, some very interesting words there by Alvaro as well. But just, again, that exclusive by Paul Gilmore, it, it confirms that Arsenal have made an approach to Real Madrid uh, to take uh, Martin Odegaard on loan for the rest of the season. The player wants to go just because, as Alvaro says, there, he's not getting game time at Real Madrid. Five minutes in the last couple of months just simply isn't enough for him. He's only started three of 18 uh, La Liga games for them as well. Again, this is a player that was playing every single minute, every single game for Real Sociedad on loan. I, I mentioned Real Sociedad because Arsenal fans don't get excited yet because Real Sociedad want him back on loan as well. They wanted to execute another option to keep him there for a year on loan, but Real Madrid wanted him to come back. Fantastic season last year for Real Sociedad. 38 games, 9 assists, 7 goals. And what's interesting there about the goals is what Alvaro said as well about the comparison with Meza Ozil, who's now left the club, um, that he might not be as assist king, so to speak, as Meza Ozil, but maybe he can get more goals than Meza Ozil. And I guess that season last year probably proves that. There is a lot of interest, though, from other clubs as well. Ajax, clubs in Germany as well, want him. But we do know that Arsenal are interested and have made an approach, although obviously Arteta wasn't given too much away there, but we do know there has been an approach. JD, you've been watching him for, uh, watch his progress for years, I should say. What do we know about him? Um, I think his natural talent has kind of shone through as an individual since becoming the youngest debutant for the Norwegian senior team. So he's been on our radar from the age of being a teenager and you're seeing the progression now and it's so interesting and I'm glad that Alvaro brought up his Real Sociedad loan spell because really at Real Sociedad was the opportunity that we had a chance to see Odegaard in his best form and Ade alluded to those stats, the nine assists, the seven goals, but it was genuinely watching the potential finally come out and play out to its full potential. And, and it was the incredible vision that he had. It was the weight of pass that has been compared to Meza Ozil there. But I loved the sort of determination and the eye for goal that he was also showing on that loan spell. So it, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how this is playing out because crucially for Arteta, and you can understand the Arsenal interest here because he, he is adaptable. You sp heard Avara just speak about his adaptability to play in between the lines. Arsenal have shown flexibility within their system both in-game and also at the start of games in terms of varying their system, whether they play four at the back, three at the back. Sometimes they play, as you've seen with Emil Smith-Rowe, and number 10 now in behind. You have to think that Odegaard would fit into that sort of role almost perfectly. But <laughs> as you know... What's key for Arsenal in this one is that, look, they have no money to spend in this transfer window. I think that's been made clear. Mm -hmm. Um, Buendia possibly was a target. Daniel Farke has come out and said, look, no, no deals for Buendia or any of these stars um, this window. It doesn't mean they can't do business with Norwich possibly in the summer. So I think Odegaard is almost a stopgap, really. If they can get someone creative in there now to help take the pressure and burden off an Emil Smith-Rowe or Bakayo Saka, young players that might need rest in. Arsenal do have European games coming up as well. It could be key to get someone in there now just to take the burden off them. But it still fits into their system and their philosophy in terms of the players that they're building together. So say Odegaard's loan does turn into something that they want for a long-term purpose, you're still having a young player in there that can still develop with that young core that you're bringing through at Arsenal at this moment in time. You do wonder, though, why Real Madrid would want to get rid of him. Um, look, Modric's time's probably coming to the end at Real Madrid. We know his contract's up very soon. Tony Cruz is getting on in age as well. You speak about a real rebuild job they want to do at Real Madrid because oh, a lot of players over the wrong side of 30 stick with him. They're only 22 years of age and now he's used to playing in the Liga as well. Yeah, so I think it would be a mistake for Real Madrid to let him go. Might, might be able to promote from within, especially if he has a really successful time in the Premier League. It could help out for, uh, work out for Real Madrid too. So he's 22 now. JD, yeah. but he signed for Real Madrid six years ago today, by the way, so he was only 16. You've been looking at some other 
big wonder kid signings. See, I, d I don't even really want to get the football manager fans at home too excited <laughs> because I know this word wonder kid almost is a trigger for you automatically. So I wanted to sort of simple it down to 16 to 18. So we can, when we say a teenager, it's too, a little bit too vast. So let's say 16 to 18 year olds because that is a pre-contract agreement. Year olds. The, when I went to 19, it got a bit wide. And you <laughs> understand why. But I want to talk about some of the sort of the big high profile teenagers between 16 and 18 that have shocked the world. And look at some of these names that we just compare as we're talking about wonder kids. I mean, that guy right there, Kylian Mbappe, after his heroics in the 2018 World Cup, his legacy was never going to be the same. It was a good thing that PSG actually signed him before, 12 months before he actually shone in that World Cup. So obviously his value skyrocketed after that. Wayne Rooney went on to be the top goal scorer of all time for both club and country. He didn't have a back rear himself. Not bad. I think he, I think he can say. Um, that man right there, the third, Rodrigo, is still probably finding his feet in a Real Madrid shirt after his £50 million move from Santos. He's probably still trying to work out where he fits into that Zidane system and obviously his future at Real Madrid. And of course, we've all coveted the last man there, Jadon Sancho, who hmm. for after moving to Brissa Dorman at 17 for £8 million, has, let's say, grown leaps and bounds as a worldwide footballer. So when you say this word wonder kid, sometimes you just need to understand the class that I'm putting Odegaard in, where his reputation You're putting from. him in that class? I'm just saying. In uh, terms I'm of, saying, are you I'm, putting him in that class? I'm just saying. This is why I did 16 to 18, because okay. I can imagine online right now, everyone's like, well, what, what about Highland? And I'm just saying 16 to 18 is the parameters that I chose because yeah. Highland signed for Dortmund at 19 years old and obviously yeah. he's still having a very good career. J uh, what he's trying to say out here is that JD makes the rules here. 100%. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, we've got about a few <laughs> tweets coming in. Um, <laughs> Malali says, how about Draxler to Arsenal rather than Odegaard? Mm. Uh, someone here called Dodger says, one injury to Smith Rowe would leave us in a very bad situation. Having seen Odegaard last season, I think he would be a great six-month loan. Jake says that Real Madrid uh, should, should keep Odegaard. They need him. Yeah. Uh, and Shaw is a Liverpool fan who says that Liverpool should go for, uh, for Odegaard instead of Arsenal. They should try and nip in there as well. It's our understanding that Arsenal very much keen on bringing him to the Emirates.